World champion boxer Mia St. John has been fighting in the ring all her life. She had two children with the late soap opera star Christoph St. John, including Julian, their oldest son. Having Julian was the most beautiful thing that I think had ever happened to me. But as a teenager, Mia says Julian changed drastically. There was a side to him that always seemed very depressed. At 17, he experienced a psychotic break and was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Julian was in and out of mental facilities for the next seven years. I would be on the streets day and night searching for my son. Julian, you gotta come home. I would find him in the parks, half naked, okay, completely delusional, not knowing what was going on. By his early 20s, Julian was also addicted to meth. In 2014, at age 24, Julian died by suicide while in a California psychiatric hospital. I got a call a few hours later from the hospital saying that um, my son was gone. And all I remember screaming at the top of my lungs, no, no, no. I knew then at that moment that I was born for a purpose. And it was not to beat the crap out of another human being. Mia's family has had a long history with mental illness and addiction. In fact, ex-husband Christoph St. John, who died earlier this year, suffered with his own struggles. And Mia says his death caused her to lose her own long-term sobriety. I had to get sober because I felt like, how could I leave my daughter? Her brother dies. Her father dies. Today, Mia has turned her fighting spirit into a crusade for anyone who suffers from mental illness, addiction, and homelessness. I'm here to make change. I'm here to reform. And for all families, for everyone that's still out there suffering, I might have retired from the ring, but I'm definitely still fighting. Hmm. Mia St. John, Mia, thank you. Thank, thank you for you. being here. Um, let's, let's talk about Julian here, because you, you say that when he was a teenager, there were signs. What, yeah. what were some of those signs, looking back? There were signs early on. I mean, I could go way back to when he was a toddler, but probably the biggest sign was the depression, the reclusiveness. Um, he once had a lot of friends, and, and all of a sudden, he stopped socializing. He would lock himself in his room. Um, he was agitated a lot um, and no longer really showed... Um, emotion, very apathetic, it seemed like. So I knew um, something was wrong, but I also have um, a degree in psychology. Mm -hmm. And so I remembered, you know, from my college days, reading about these illnesses. Was there, so, was, looking back, was there an, an incident? Was there a single event maybe that you could, you could think back on that maybe acted as some sort of impetus for all of this or, or no? Was it just this sort of gradual it, decline? It was, it, yeah, it was definitely gradual, and, and it was all leading up to a psychotic break, which happened at about 17 years old. And that's about the normal age, is late teens, uh, early 20s, and that's why they cannot diagnose a serious mental illness until they've hit that age. I think what's hard about this is there are so many people who can relate to, I'm sure, your story. And you guys are the parents, and Christoph, obviously, you guys were great parents, mm -hmm. doing everything you could. You know, it's not like, you know, I think so many people think, you know, it's not like he was out on his own. Like, you, you talked mm -hmm. about how you were looking for him and you were trying. Right. So when we talk about Christoph, um, you know, I read how he blamed himself a little bit. What more, yeah. you know, could you have done? Right. I feel like you guys did everything. We really did. And, and what people don't understand is you cannot prevent... Um, mental illness, you know. Did um, he blame himself, Christoph? He definitely well? blamed himself because Christoph was he was he was the man of the family, um, and he our culture does not really accept mental illness. Mm -hmm. um, the Latinos don't. A lot of the black families don't. So he was raised in that mm -hmm. you know environment where it's you know get off your ass and. Mm -hmm. Um, shape up, up yeah. Uh, yeah. cheer up, you know. Which is why it's so yeah. good that you're here. Yeah, and I, and I want parents to know that the biggest thing you can do is educate yourself. Educate yourself. Learn about these illnesses because what if all these shooters that have suffered from schizophrenia, bipolar, um, the Arizona shooter, Newtown, mm -hmm. um, Columbine, uh, yeah. 
Parkland, what if those parents were educated? What if the kids were educated? What if we knew ahead of time? Could mm -hmm. we have stopped a tragedy? And this is, after all of these tragedies that happen, you say that this is what you were born to do, is now to use your platform to raise awareness. You've even turned Julian's art studio mm -hmm. into a place Yes, for the homeless. It, it, it's just amazing how my whole life I thought fighting was all I ever wanted was to win championship belts, and that was my, um, I wanted to be Rocky Balboa. Mm -hmm. But what I realized later uh, after my son passed was boxing was not significant at all. Mm -hmm. it, my purpose was this, was mental health and, and getting people help, and, and that's what I was born to do. And after my son passed, he was a brilliant artist. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them tend to be really good artists. Sure. Um, and I mean, he was at the Laguna Gallery of Temporary mm -hmm. Art and we never sold originals. Um, he was just, he was that good. So I turned his studio into a free center mm -hmm. for everyone that suffers from addiction, mental illness, homelessness. Um, we have yoga, we have meditation, we have boxing, we yeah. have... Uh, all free. And Christoph, uh, in the piece there, you mentioned his death and, and how that affected you and your battle with sobriety. Are you, are you sober now? I'm sober now. Okay. Um, still struggling, you know, but I, I am in therapy. I am getting help. Um, Christoph's death was, uh, was extremely hard for me because, you know, a lot of people know that... Um, He remained, he, I'm sorry. It's okay. He okay. remained, you know, my, one of my best friends to the day he passed. Mm -hmm. And um, especially in the last, you know, year of his life where we, the family really had to get together and just take care of him, you know, make sure he got to work and mm -hmm. just that. It was really difficult. Um, it was a very difficult time for me. Thank you. We're praying for you. Thank, Thank you, you for sharing your story. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And you go to miastjohnfoundation.org. Okay. To find one of my we'll put programs. That information on our yeah, website thank as well, Mia St. John Foundation .org. And by the way, all week long, NBC News focusing on mental health and young people. It's mm -hmm. our series called Kids Under Pressure. You can head to today.com, third hour today, for more stories, more information, that website that Mia just mentioned as well. We'll be right back. Thank you, Mia.